a question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it down the aisle and I'm going to have everyone pick who would win, Arrow or the Turtles. Arrow. Jesus, Arrow. <laughs> Sorry, I feel like I influenced that comment right there. That, that comment was made under duress. <laughs> I will tell you something right now. The shortest turtle is six foot eight. They're all ninjas. Okay, I okay. guess the two is in the title. Yeah, the yeah. turtles. Okay, it's probably the turtles. Are they young or old? Teenagers. They're teenagers. Teenage ninja. Are they mutants or what? Yes. What kind of animals are they? We could go like this for hours, but they don't have Felicity smoke. Great question. Excellent question. Neil? Uh, who was there at the party last night? <laughs> who saw my wife Ravey dance on the piano? <laughs> I'm taking Ravey in that fight. <laughs> Absolutely. Every year that Flash is on the air and Arrow is on the air, there will be a crossover. And uh, Legends as well, of course. And Legends as well. Uh, they're very challenging to do, so uh, when we finish them, the producers always say, Yeah, we're not going to do it next year. They're lying. Okay. <laughs> I, talked, I talked to the president of the CW at dinner, and I asked him if Legends gets picked up for a second season. Are we going to do a big three-night crossover? And he used a word that I couldn't say, and then he said, of course. That's a great question. <laughs> Ooh. Yes. Uh, should we go down the line again? Yeah. <laughs> Starting at the opposite end. Yeah. <laughs> Who wins? The girls, right? The girls win every time. It's not even close. <laughs> Nobody else is going to say anything different. <laughs> the girls win every time, right? right. Win. <laughs> girls rule. The girls win every time. Yeah. The girls win every time. Um, 
that's the best English. Um, yeah. <laughs> What's my man's name who was the driver? I love him. As like, I can't remember his name. Not Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Not that driver. Um, no, no. He, he, it was a great movie he did. He was, was it called Drive? Yes. No. He's funky. He, he, he's like. That's Jason Statham. He's like funky, very good looking. But. Gosling, Ryan Gosling. I want to see Ryan Gosling do it. That's what I want to see. Him do I want to get bulked up. I want to do the booty thing. I want to be Ryan Gosling as Earl. I think that's a great choice. About you guys. Oh, uh, who, who's gonna be? Who, 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 who? Be Paul Blackthorne. It's gonna be Paul Blackthorne. Uh, Lance is gonna be played by Clive Owen. Yeah, that's good. Actually, actually, when I was younger, people used to say to me, especially when I had my hair, they would say, you look like a young Sean Connery. And I was extremely complimented by this, and it was great. Unfortunately, now people just say, you look like Sean Connery. <laughs> so I guess an old Sean Connery would be my request, but there we go. Inga Gart. Who would, uh, who would play Echo? Echo will be playing... Or, or Curtis, as the case may be. By most Def. Uh, <laughs> most Def? <laughs> most Def. He is cool. He is He's cool. cool dude. Man. Most Def. Yeah, him or Richard Aoyoni. Oh, oh, yeah. Don and Glover, too. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. Don and Glover, too. That's good. I'm really glad that Don and Glover brought Matthew McConaughey home. Wait a minute. That was Matt Damon. Never mind. <laughs> uh, who would play Tommy Merlin? Tommy Merlin. Somebody who dies a lot. <laughs> Robbie and Mel. <laughs> that's good, that's good, Robbie and Mel. Robbie and Neil, no, no offense, but I, I feel like we all agree that no one else can play Damien Dark. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Actually, actually, there's, there's only one person that could possibly touch, apart from Stephen and Mel. Anthony Hopkins. That would be the only person that could touch Neil in that role. Wow. That's good. Thank you, Paul. Good question. Next episode of Arrow, so we're wondering on a scale of one to ten how heartbreaking the maid wedding is going to be, and if Oliver wrote the vows that are going to be used in that wedding. In the wedding, ten and sure. <laughs> I can't tell you if you wrote them. <laughs> is that the end of that? That's really the answer. Like some couples counseling or something before just like. So you to break up, to walk away, or walk away, guys, or what? I think it was just. She walked away. She walked away. That's right, because she had your buyer's gadget. Thanks for that. Sorry. Thank you. They'll get back together and dig all the help on You need that black friend, don't you? have that black friend. One to help you walk, one to help you get back to the world. That's right, that's right. I think uh, Tommy was coming to Dr. Rhodes probably for some, for, for some IVs after epic hangovers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think mean, it's, you know, I, I, I will say, just this, a little sidebar, it was a pleasure to meet you yesterday, and thank you for being here. Uh, as all of you, it's amazing to me to be up here with all these guys, new friends and old. Um, and th this being my first event, thank you to you guys, and thanks to Steven, and thanks to the, the organizers. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Batman with a bow and arrow. And I wanted to thank you, Steven, for being the best on screen Batman that's not Batman um, that we've seen yet. So. <laughs> Isn't Batman just Green Arrow without a bow and arrow? Yeah. <laughs> that, was, well played, well that, that was quotable. <laughs> Keep going. Well done. Uh, thanks for everything, guys. And uh, if you had a fictional character that you guys would want to play, or what would your dream role be? Who would you pick? Ethan Hunt. Tommy Monahan. Harry Flashman. 
Anybody know the hitman, Tommy Monahan? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah, that's how it's going. Uh, Troy Green. Oh, and Pete Mitchell. And Matthew Ford. Oh, and no, Ferris no, 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 that's, that's a lie. That's a lie. Uh, Uncharted. Drake. Drake. Drake, yeah. One of my, one of my favorite musicians. What? I want to hear this. What, what would it be? This is a, this is a um, fictional, right? What fictional character would you like to play? Like John Stewart. <laughs> He's not very fictional. No, the other John Stewart that has a certain <laughs> ring on his left hand. <laughs> My, hang on, my wife is right there. If I didn't watch Mad Men and every episode like three times, we wouldn't be married and have a kid. I literally saw her, paused the laptop, looked her up on IMDb, met her two nights later, and she was pregnant. <laughs> and then there was a brief gap, sorry, there was a brief gap, couple of, about a year, and then she was pregnant. But, but, uh, so that I could get done with that, go to New York, do Shakespeare in the Park, and start dating, and eventually wed that wonderful oh, woman. Yeah. You've got the guys selling the drugs, and you've got the guys chasing the guys selling the drugs, the cops and the bad guys, so to speak. But um, what they position beautifully is that no one's particularly good, no one's particularly bad. They're just born into the situations they're born into, and everyone's just trying to do the best they can. So it's very sort of non-judgmental in that sense, and brilliantly sort of poised the way it's all laid out. So actually, The Wire, if anybody hasn't seen that, I recommend it, it's very good. And uh, As endorsed by Stephen Amell. Oh yeah. It's great. House of Cards. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so my questions for all of you, uh, now that Damien Dark lost his magic, how's, like, how is the dynamic going to change? How are you guys going to go after him? Things aren't good for Damien Dark in jail. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Not good at all, thank you, Steven. No, we have to, uh, we have to prosecute him. That's it. Gotta go. Gotta get this guy uh, locked away forever. Away from his stuff. Trust me, Damien comes back. <laughs> it's uh, the, the rest of the season, which I'm not gonna give any stuff away. Uh, first of all, for me to be able to play Damien Dark this year, opposite Steven and all these amazing actors, it has been the joy of my life, so thank you boys for that. Uh, 
I'm just going to interrupt. Having this guy on our set has been amazing. He's just incredible to work with. So we're going to. Can we have a round of applause for this guy, please? Because he's. <laughs> we're lovely having him around. Carry on. But trust me, Damien, it's darker and darker by the end of the season. We won't let you down. Trust me. It's a process that is ongoing, but when I learned it, I learned it over the course of about three weeks, just learning the basics, and I got a lot better, and I built a foundation for a technique that I continue to try and improve. Mr. Mel and Mr. Renzi, you have been my motivation and inspiration for years, and I know I should say it, but I hope you can say something to keep me motivated. Right here. Thank you. Aww. Um, to keep you motivated. Well, first of all, thank you for the wonderful gift that you gave me and Stephen. It was very, very nice of you. And um, like I tell most people, wherever you are, man, just what's in your hand, right? That's, that's what I tell people that I usually talk to. Like, what should I do? How can I stay motivated? Um, the motivation is around you if you open your eyes, believe it or not. And um, just use what's around you, right? If, you're, if there's a community theater, if there's, um, if there's a workout facility, if there's something better to eat, whatever it is, it's around you, right? It, you don't have to go too far to find it, but um, keep it up, man, because I talked to you yesterday and, and I talked to you before, and, and you have a lot going for yourself, so just keep it up. Thank you. You're welcome. And love your family and love your friends. That's the cool thing right there. Every single day. Love your family, love your friends. That's it, man. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Can, can I just uh, can I just add something to that? Um, a lot of people spend a lot of their lives trying to work out what they can get, right? They want to get a job, they want to get some money, they want to get a big house, right? We kind of get a bit obsessed about getting stuff. Kind of like a two or three year old, like a toddler in the playground, you know? If you turn it around, you think, hang on, what can I give with my life, right? If you think about what I can give with my life, the rest takes care of itself. You will receive all the things you need as a result of the giving that you've done. So whatever your job is, don't think I want to get a job in whatever you do. You just think I want to give my services as a dot, 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 and then the rest will take care of itself. So frame everything in a giving way instead of a getting way. That's the point. Take this one. <laughs> I love any question. <laughs> it's my favorite question ever. Sour candy. Sour, anything sour. Sour jelly bellies, sour gummies, sour lemons, sour punkers. Anything sour. I hope you're with me on this. <laughs> Nod your head if you are. Yeah? No? Okay. That's cool. A little bit different, okay. I like to get uh, popcorn at a movie theater, put salt and vinegar uh, topping on top of it, which is a Canadian thing, and then dump peanut butter M&Ms in the middle. I would die. You're welcome. I love Damien, yeah. Damien Dark Chocolate. I also... I have a hankering for Damien Dark Rum! Anybody? <laughs> so Damien Dark Rum's coffee? Anybody? It's a theme here. Uh, Lemonheads for me. Lemonheads for my dog. Lemonheads. Uh, peanut M&M's. Yeah. Paul Blackthorne doesn't eat candy, does he? <laughs> I was thinking really hard. <laughs> Actually, I would be the first in line for the Damien Dark Chocolate because I love the darkest, darkest, sort of grittiest chocolate you can get. Yes, but you know that. That's a joke. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a euphemism. <laughs> but it is. Uh, Dark Chocolate. Do you want to remake them? Oliver out of the town. <laughs> that was Oliver in season one. <laughs> uh, oh, 
Oliver wants to be with Felicity. Uh, Felicity does not want to be with Oliver currently. And I think that Oliver is going to maintain his position like an adult. <laughs> Very stubborn adult, like an, like an adult that maybe occasionally stomps his foot on the ground to get what he wants, but an adult nonetheless. Maybe he'll suck her into a fake wedding and uh. <laughs> never mind. Sorry. <laughs> no one understood, they thought it was so bad, but we have two birthdays to celebrate on this panel today. And I think we missed you because we had that big snow storm in New Jersey. So we want to say happy birthday to Neil and to Paul with some cakes, and I want you, you to sing. <laughs> All right, uh, I did this yesterday for Katie Long. <laughs> and it's sure, happy it's not it's, 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 Are you sure? sure. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Possibly, maybe on Earth 2 or something, Felicity and Dave will end up together. Yeah, what do you think about that? <laughs> totally agree! <laughs> She's gonna end up with anybody. You can have one on Earth 2. I have a... We're gonna catch her for a little <laughs> Who would have thought that would have happened? Yeah. <laughs> when are you gonna knock Lila up? I know, for Connor Hawk. Well, you know, he. I... Yeah. Was Wait, Connor Hawk our child, me and Lila's? Yes. Maybe. <laughs> That's the question. I don't know. And where was Sarah? In our view. Wait, did you marry Sarah? That's my daughter! <laughs> Something like that. No, no. Diggle's son. Daughter. <laughs> this is all again. The Earths are very, very confusing. The Earths are very confusing. Three, Did you four. not just say, didn't you bang Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what he just said. That's an awesome question. Next question. Is Tom back? Let's go ahead and go to the next one. Earth one, why wasn't your son the arrow? That, that's a great question. Uh, the, it's an alternate timeline, right? It's a timeline that exists if and when the legends fail, right? So we shouldn't take everything that existed within that timeline at face value. It existed for that episode, and if we want it to change, then you should watch Legends Thursday at 8, 7 central. <laughs> Her butler. No, she would have her superpower mind control. Yeah. She would have mind control. She basically has it already. <laughs> <laughs> See, I feel like she would be like a Borg or something like that. Like some type of. Yeah. Good question. Thank you. My wig falls yep. off a lot. My wig. <laughs> one Season one, David was supposed to, uh, when he's found out that Deadshot is alive <clears throat> and wants to take him down, there's a scene where I am blocking his punches. Now, originally, as scripted, I was blocking his kicks. Except I took one of the kicks and landed like four feet from where I was. <laughs> and, I, and as the second kick was about to come, I was like, no, no, no! Imagine that leg coming at you at full speed. It's scary enough with the hands coming at you at full speed. And I literally begged off of it. I'm like, we have to think of something else, otherwise I'm gonna have to have a stunt double in here. I never beg off. You must know it's dangerous. 
that was the closest thing. All right, so we ended up throwing punches and I see. Well, it's funny about Steven, though. I got, I got a funny story about Steven. This didn't have to do, do, do anything with me. But Steven does a lot of his own stuff and just super physical. Everybody admires him for that physicality. And he doesn't really get injured a lot for the most part. I mean, you know, Dean's here and there. Well, it's funny that there was a scene, I think, season one or season two, where there's a big, huge tractor tire in season like season, season, season two, two. In, in the foundry. And Steve is like throwing a sledgehammer at it. <laughs> <laughs> He's throwing a sledgehammer at it. He threw out his freaking back muscle. No fight scene did it. No scenes at nighttime at 3 o'clock in the morning when you're cold and should pull a muscle, right? It was hitting a tire with a sledgehammer that put him out. That's not true. That's not true. It was doing the salmon ladder in between takes to stay warm because it was freezing on the set and doing the salmon ladder, not even doing it, but pulling the ladder off of the bar. Pulling the bar off of the ladder. Damn it. I pulled a muscle. I was out of commission for two months. Yes. We had to carry a scene. Oh, damn it. I was wondering, in the early days, what vision did you guys have for the show versus what it is now? Uh, I think I can take this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd still be there. <laughs> Seeing Colin and Bond Department in Vancouver still trying to sell it. We don't talk about it. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's good. I'm kidding. Um, I'll tell you what, uh, Greg Berlanti, who's the um, Don Corleone of the DC cinematic or television universe, pardon me, um, has a saying, <clears throat> and his saying is that you have a hit TV show until you don't. Because you have it and then it can go away. And as well as Arrow was going, we don't take it for granted. We got picked up for a fifth season. We hope there would be a sixth, but we never know. Um, and so, to that end, we don't save anything. Which is to say that we don't really know what the show is going to be, because we ebb and flow with how it goes on set. So you never really know. Like, I used to, there was maybe a vision for the first season, and you know, coming into the second, third, and fourth, they talk about key words and stuff like that. And I think going into the fifth season, all, the end of Oliver's flashback journey will be a big thing that they can touch on. But as for what's happening at the present day, meh. Happens episode to episode. What do you choose for your background I, music? I and the Tiger is not an option. I, I know mine. It's Apollo Creed and Rocky Balboa running through the water, baby. Yeah. So, what was the song? What was the song that, that, that was great? It was a theme. It wasn't even, it was like a. It was he like. Was the tiger, but she said it wasn't an option. No, it wasn't that. Eye of the tiger. It wasn't, no, not that scene. That scene wasn't Eye of the Tiger. Look it up. You gotta fly now. Up. The scene was Rocky Balboa and Apollo Creed running through the water on the beach. I would go with whatever they played in Rocky IV when he was training in Russia. Yes! That's good. That's good. Hearts on fire. That's Hearts on fire. Flash dance music. <laughs> She's a baby. And I am not taking out of this South Park's You Need a Montauk song. <laughs> you need a Montauk! Even Rocky had a Montauk! How do that? Yeah. You need meanwhile, a Montauk! <laughs> meanwhile, Quentin Lance would be listening to a ballad by Rick Astley. <laughs> Easy. Rick Rose! Getting all upset. <laughs> Easy. Actually, that's been a weird thing. When I'm doing my character stuff, I sit there and I think about the music the, 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 the character might like. And uh, I thought, you know, Springsteen would be a very clear sort of person that um, Lance would like. And I kind of, I used to do it with my iPod, put the music on shuffle, and they'd be like, oh no, he wouldn't like that. Oh yeah, he wouldn't like that. And I kind of ran out of all those options. And so I went to Pandora, and I took Bruce Springsteen radio. And then this, this song came on, and I was like, oh my god, this is so Lance, this is fantastic. So now it's in my Lance music collection, and I can't stand it. But Lance loves it. <laughs> so I have to walk around listening to Bob Seger. 
it's a nightmare. Anyway, uh, that wasn't the answer to the question, but that just came up then. Um, in terms of music for a workout, um, does anyone know Bag of the Smiths from back in the day? They have a song called Heaven Knows I'm Miserable Now. And that would be my theme music for a workout. Basically, I'll be there, huh? Exactly. You just sort of take it easy, sit back and, you know, have a drink or something. And Damien Dark listens to boy bands. Menudo. <laughs> there is literally one song that I listen to, and it's the truth. Every time I drive up, every time I go to the set, it's not that one, honey. Uh, White Snake is my tune. Here I go again. I'm Damien darked up every day, so there it is. By the way, it's funnier to picture that because Neil doesn't drive himself, so he's sitting in the passenger seat <laughs> doing that while someone else is driving and trying not to look at each other. Pretend I'm driving though, it's great. It's like, yeah, yeah, I have a vision of Tawny, what was that, Tawny Gatino back in the day on that on top of a Corvette, was it? Yeah. In the, in the video. In the video of what was that? Oh, Steven. Or Katie. Felicity. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Oh, no. <laughs> with, her, with her mind in control. <laughs> this side of the panel just went, oh man. <laughs> this is going to get ugly. Just talking about strong. Look at my arms. Whatever, man. When you filmed the grave scene, you actually didn't know who you were grieving for. And I, is that true? Not my question. <laughs> That's simple, true or false? No, it's not true. Oh, okay. Well, I have that question. What piece of advice for everyone would you give to your characters? Also, still from a friend. <laughs> what smart friend? That's a good question. What piece of advice would I give to. Yeah, what, what piece of advice would Stephen Mill give to Oliver Queen? Oh, I thought, like, what. Okay, to Oliver Queen? Yeah. Come on, oh, man. <laughs> To Damien Dark, come on, Damien. Okay? To Lance, I'd be like, I know that you, I know that you're recovering, but should we go get a beer or something like that? Go to Bob Seger concert. To uh, to Curtis, I can't actually tell you what I'd say to Curtis, but you should turn in, you should tune into some upcoming episodes. Yeah, good yeah. stuff. <laughs> Curtis, Curtis, gets Curtis. And Echo, by extension, made myself, David, and Paul laugh so hard in an upcoming episode that I don't know that they will be able to use any of our coverage. <laughs> so listen, it's impossible trying to work with him. It's ridiculous. Okay. Keeping a straight to, face, uh, forget about it. To Tommy Merlin, I'd say, come back. <laughs> It's gonna become a thing! No. 